this first part out. Now that I've had my makeup and hair <laughs> and I got my cameraman back, anyway, I'm working on a series of tip videos. I had tips on my website for years, just written tips. And with the advent of Facebook, there's one of the main groups I go to is the silversmithing group, you know, metalsmithing. I've been at it since 1977, so I have a little bit of background when it comes to metalsmithing. My first torch when we lived in a small trailer in Anaheim, California, three blocks from Disneyland, where we got to watch the fireworks every night, was it was called a burns o -Matic. It had a, a butane tank and a torch tip on it. So that's what I personally started out with. I've seen people putting these up a bunch on the Smith and Group. And to me personally, I use this to light my cigars. Yes, I smoke cigars. These things are somewhat viable for fine work. They're almost worthless for anything beyond that. So that's my feedback on these type torches. This was bought many, many years ago. It was made in Taiwan. So Taiwan knows how to make good stuff. Most of the stuff that's coming out of China is nearly worthless, so I don't know what to say. Okay, for, for me, the first real torch type setup I had was, the, the, back then it was called a press the light torch. These are torches that work off of a acetylene and they draw atmospheric oxygen. I just did some homework on these for somebody on the Smith and Group. You can buy these today with the gauge, the hose, and the handpiece and a tip. The uni weld one. Don't go looking for a press light. The uni weld, $138. So for the $138, you have your regulator, your, your handpiece, and your hose. And these come with numerous tips. I, I'm going to fire some, some of the tips up so you can see what I mean. You can, I think you can buy six different tips for these. All the way from a small flame up to a, a, a metal mountain flame. So we'll go ahead and get set. I'll get some tips out and then I'll fire up the, some of the flames on this. Okay, a lot of people buy the Press a lot of Uniweld. I, they're, they're basically exactly the same thing. They just have different names on them. This is the standard tip it comes with. I was going to show you the smallest tip I have, but for some reason it's clogged up. It's only been hanging for a lot of years. I quit, I quit using the, the small press light tip years ago. This is the main flame that I typically use and then the next one up but you, you can see you know you can go a little tiny flame like for heating up something and then you can get a hot flame but if you notice there's all kinds of yellow in that flame that is coming out. Well that's the acetylene. It doesn't, it's, it's, does, it's not real clean burning. You just light acetylene, which I just did, Greg had never seen it before. It puts off a just terrible black soot. So when I tell somebody that acetylene's dirty, that's what I'm talking about. Then I change this to the next size up. So you can see where you get more. I need to grab something that I can grab this with. You still feel me? Yeah. 
Okay. Well, I, I can show you, you, you. If you don't know anything about putting one of these in, you just lay it in there and it, it's, it screws in like a standard right hand thread. You get it to where it bottoms out and then this tightens it up the rest of the way. This ring down here. Okay, this is the next size tip. And you can buy all these tips. Okay, now that's it. That's that's a low flame on this. This is the the flame which I'll demonstrate in the future video. This is about the height of the flame with a press of light that you want to use when you're soldering a bezel and you're heating from underneath. You know, I I, I will demonstrate it. There's plenty of heat there to get a bezel to drop perfect or to solder perfect on a back plate. Okay, now this one gets a lot bigger. Again, dirty flame. And I can't remember how many sizes there are. I think it's maybe six different sizes. Okay, and then one more. <coughs> I've been using this tip to light my wood stove every morning recently. <laughs> it works great. <laughs> Get it going in no time. Close the door on a little bit and you got a flame in no time. Okay, again, you just make sure this is locked down. Okay, now this particular flame, you can melt silver for casting, gold for casting. It's, it's rather slow, but it does do it. Oh, and again, if you're doing heavy shank bracelets and stuff, and all you have is a press to light, when I demonstrate soldering on heavy stuff, you can use this flame up, up like in your bracelet chain. Back and forth, back and forth. But if you want to melt, so these torches are super versatile, and this is. My original setup, I used it for years, you know, I couldn't tell you how much smithing I did with just one of these torches. Okay, now we're going to look at my preferred torch for nowadays. I'll get, get it out and we'll do more video. Okay, my torch of choice has been for many, many years now, I guess. Probably at least 35 years, maybe a little bit longer. When I originally bought it, it's set up for oxyacetylene, which I used for many years. And, and recently, I, you know, recently, I decided I was going to try it with oxygen propane. So that's what you're looking at right now. It's just your standard outdoor barbecue propane tank and then a I think it's a B oxygen bottle. Um, and the torch I use, go ahead and come toward me. The torch I use is called a Smith, I think it's a mini torch, tiny torch. When you buy this, you get the gauges for your tanks. And I believe that the one of the gauges goes on the acetylene bottle. I, I just have this, this, this hooked up to a, the standard propane adjuster that comes on the, the barbecues. You can, you can change the pressure a little bit, so that works great. It comes with five tips of varying sizes to use tiny, tiny, tiny flames. Or I know there's some applications for them, but I rarely use the tiniest flame. And you can also buy what I call 
from my old machine shop days. It's called a rosebud tip. Multiple flames come out of here, and you can get a, you can melt silver and stuff with this, no problem. I mean, it gets hot, hot, especially if you're running acetylene behind it. This thing seems to work better with acetylene than propane. Anyway, I'll go ahead and light this little thing up. And you notice this flame's not dirty. If that was acetylene, there'd be all this black, fluffy stuff burning off with, with the gas. That's why I prefer this, because it's so clean burning. Okay, and this is barely turned on. Okay, then I add a little bit of oxygen to it. And that little flame there, you don't want to get your fingers near. I can assure you that. I've done it more than once. I've got burns in the top of my fancy Smith & Bench over here just by barely hitting. Anyway, you can make it a lot bigger. That's getting real hot, real hot. Make it even bigger. Hopefully you can hear it. But that flame right there is, oh, I, it's, it's hot. It, it takes a while to get used to using one of these. Again, I'll be using this torch and all, all my, most of my smithing, making stuff videos. Okay, I'm going to change this out and show you a, a little. Ooh, it's hot. Top, ooh, 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 the top, the top. Wow. Show you a little flame. That one's pretty tiny. This tip here for, you know, I don't do faceted stones for rare. I have, but I, I don't do like rings and stuff like that. I would guess this tip's the one that you would use for re-tipping, like diamonds, maybe not, that's pretty big. But look how tiny that flame is. I mean, it's tiny, and they even go down, I believe, one more size, maybe two. But with that much heat, it's amazing how quick it will put precise heat on a little small area. And then like I'm saying, when you're re-tipping prongs for diamond rings and stuff, you just take that thing down there and get it close to the, the prong and it, almost immediately that prong will come up to near melting temperature. Again, that's why this is such a, a versatile little torch and I like it so much. Okay, and then I'm gonna put the um, rosebud thing on. I don't know if I can get it to work or not, because it like I said earlier, it seems to work better with the acetylene behind it. I'll see if I can get it fired up. And you notice I'm not using a wrench or anything on this. It's not necessary, you know, just finger tight. Okay, let's see if I can get this thing. I don't know if I can get this to work because the, the nature of this, the oxygen seems to cause it a lot of trouble. Oops, wrong way. Okay, if I, this is just to give you an idea, if you can see there's, there's four little flames coming out of that thing. And again, if I had a cellar in here, I could get a flame coming out maybe eight inches out from this. And if I go to, if I have a project that I'm going to work on with this, I'll probably put 
assemblies on it because for some reason the propane doesn't like to work with this. So that is a disadvantage to propane oxygen with the mini torch. Anyway, that's pretty much it on the mini torch and then I'm just going to get out another torch. I'm not going to light it up and stuff. I'm just going to show it to you. It's basically, basically the, in my opinion, the, if you're going to do a lot of casting or you're making ingots or whatever, it's my choice of, you, if you want to melt a lot of metal fast. So I'll get it out and show that to you. Okay, this is the torch setup I use when I need intense heat. This is the standard oxyacetylene that most machine shops, welding shops, muffler shops have because you can weld with this, you can melt metal real quick. It, they have a much larger gauges for it. I just got one gauge out. These screws, this screws right to an oxygen bottle. If it's a, if, oh, this is the acetylene one. Same thing. This screws right to the acetylene bottle. The oxygen one screws right to the oxygen. Same thing here. Oxygen is settling. The, the, this is like the giant of the mini torch. I mean, the flame that you can get out of these are unbelievable. If you have a rosebud tip on it, it's, it's so loud it's hard to believe. I, I just made four or five five ounce silver ingots using this to melt five ounces of silver in a, in a crucible, I would guess four minutes, four or five minutes, because these things put out such a large flame and such a hot flame. So if you're going to get into doing a lot of like casting, we, I used to do a lot of casting. Always use this torch or an electro melt to where it electrically melts the, the um, metals. If, if you do a lot of casting, if, if you make things that need a lot of heat, this is the way to go. Granted, oh, it took me many years to own all these torches I just talked about, but I'm, I just wanted to give you insight on the uses of each one. So let's hope you enjoyed the video.